name is Deidre and I am coming to you straight from the First Kids Clubhouse. I know you guys haven't been in this room in so long and I can't wait to see everybody back. I sure hope that happens soon. All right, well, I am so excited about the lesson today because I get to talk to you about Jesus. Ha! Best story ever. But before we get started with that, I have a detective friend who wants to come and visit us and tell us a little more about what he does. Stay tuned. Hey kids. Well, I'm Miss Deidre's friend and my job is to be a detective. A detective gets to solve mysteries. Sometimes those mysteries are crimes. So when I'm trying to solve a crime, First thing I need to do is come up with a list of suspects. Hmm, it could be a long one. It could include friends, relatives, neighbors, coworkers. Then I'm gonna start gathering clues to that crime. Hmm, and when I gather those clues, I can start to cross names off my list of suspects. Hmm, who has an alibi? Cross them out. Let's see. Who doesn't really have a reason to commit the crime? I can cross those out too. Who really had no way of committing that crime? Cross them off too. One by one, you can eliminate the suspects until all the evidence points to just one person. One person who could have committed that crime. Now I've got a mystery of my own that I've got to go off and solve, but I know Miss Deidre is going to talk to you today about the best mystery of them all. Hmm, I wonder who that's gonna be. Are you ready to hear the story? I know I am. Well, I sure hope he figures out the answer to his mystery. Well, you know, the last few weeks, kids, we've been talking about mysteries of the Bible. The Bible is filled with unsolved mysteries. How did God make the world? How did he pause time to help Joshua defeat the Amorites? How can Jesus not only be both God and man, but part of the Trinity? Hmm. Today, we want to not only explore a mystery, we want to solve it. We want to find out once and for all who can save us from our sins. Hmm. Now, what's a sin? Let's talk about that first. Sins are all of the bad things we've done that break God's commandments. Lying, stealing, taking God's name in vain, disobeying our parents, all of those are sin. Our sin has created quite a debt between us and God. And the Bible says the price of sin is eternal death. That means separation from God, and we sure don't want that. Well, there's a lot of religions that talk about sin and the bad choices we make. A lot of them say, if you do enough good things, then it takes care of the bad things. But the Bible makes it clear that there's nothing that we can do to pay our debt. We need someone to pay that price for us. But who? Nope, there's only one man who can do that for us. And that's Jesus. Jesus makes it very easy to solve this mystery. He tells us in John 3.16 why he came to earth. Now, John 3.16, I've got my Bible, but that is probably one that you have heard before, and you may even have it memorized. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life life. Then in John 10, I'm going to flip to John 10, he tells us he's the only one who can save us. So we're going to go through John 10 verses 11 through 18. All right, here we go. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I, Jesus, am the good shepherd. 
I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. All right, so Jesus was both God and man. He's the only man who never sinned. He's the only one who could have died for us. Every other man and woman who had ever lived has sinned. And every man and woman who's lived since Jesus has sinned. They can't pay our sin debt because they have sin debt of their own. Jesus is the only man who never sinned. He is our only hope. Now, Jesus not only tells us that he did it, he tells us why. It's because he loves us. God loved the world so much, he gave his only son for us. Because Jesus died, we can have eternal life. If we profess our faith in Jesus, he will make our debt disappear and take us to live with him in heaven. Now I have something super cool I wanna show you. So stay tuned for the next little bit, all right? All right, kids, so I've got a heart right here, and then you open it up, there's another heart, all right? So I'm gonna take this one in here. We talked about how sin is that yucky stuff in our life. So I'm gonna write sin, S-I-N, all right? And then I'm gonna take my markers and look at all that, Blah. yuck, yuck, yuck. Add a little green to that. Oh, now it's starting to really get, look pretty yucky. Add a little more blue. All right. So when we go out in the world, we want to appear like everything is, everything is pure and beautiful, but really on the inside, it's pretty yucky, right? But the cool part is we've got Jesus. So I'm going to take this right here. And the water is going to be like Jesus. And we're going to put that in there. And oh, look at that. Jesus can see everything. But you know what else he can do that's super, super cool? Watch this. If I can get it apart. There we go. All right. He can wash our sins away. All right. So there's that inside heart that was so yucky. There's the one that was on the front. Isn't that cool? Jesus can wash all those sins away if we believe in him and ask him into our hearts. All right, so kids, detectives always wanna answer the same questions that reporters do when they're telling a story. Who did it? What did they do? Where did they do it? When did they do it? How did they do it and why? We can find all of these answers in the Bible. John 3 verse 13 tells us Jesus did it. He is God's son, the only man who never sinned. He's the only suspect and he wants us to know it was him. What did he do? He died to save his sheep, that's us, so that we could live forever with him. Where did he do it? The Bible answers this question as well. Jesus died on a hill called Golgotha, outside Jerusalem on a cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and rose from the grave three days later. When did he do it? Historical records that date back to the time of the New Testament tell us Jesus was alive during the first century AD. That was a long time ago, about 2000 years ago. We not only have the New Testament, but there's some other writings in history that tell us about the time of Jesus and the early church that he founded. How did he do it? Jesus paid our sin debt by dying for us. Jesus had no sin debt of his own to pay, so only he could pay ours. One death 
one final sacrifice paid for the sins of the whole world. And last but not least, why? Well, John 3.16 tells us right off the top, it's because he loves us. He loved us so much, he was willing to take our place and pay our debt. This is an open and shut case. Jesus died for our sins because he loves us. He's the only one who could save us. The only real question that remains is for us to answer. Do we believe in Jesus the Christ? Do we believe he died for our sins? Are we willing to place our faith in him? The evidence is all there. His confession is written in red. He died on the cross for us. Now, will you accept that verdict and receive Jesus as your savior? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you were the perfect spotless lamb who came down to earth to save us from our sins. We thank you so much that if we believe in him, that we will live eternally forever and ever with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
I can 